Before stealth bombers and hypersonic weapons, the sound of potential Armageddon was the thunder of eight contra-rotating propellers. This is the incredible story of the Soviet Union's most enduring strategic bomber, the Tu-95 Bear. For more than 70 years, a single aircraft has served as the most recognizable and persistent symbol of Russian strategic air power. It is a machine born in the darkest days of the Cold War, a paradox of engineering that combines a 1950s airframe with 21st century weaponry. It's a high-speed bomber that shuns jet engines for propellers, an aviation antique that refuses to retire. With its menacing swept-back wings and a roar that could curdle the blood of NATO fighter pilots, the Tupolev Tu-95, known to the West as the Bear, is a living legend of the skies. This is the story of how it was forged in the crucible of nuclear paranoia, how it became the West's most unwelcome visitor, and why this immortal boogeyman is still on duty today. The story of the bear begins in the shadow of total annihilation. After World War II, the world was split in two, and the Soviet Union found itself at a severe strategic disadvantage. The United States possessed a growing fleet of intercontinental bombers like the Convair B-36 Peacemaker, capable of flying from American bases, dropping a nuclear bomb on Moscow, and returning. Joseph Stalin had an atomic bomb, but he had no way to deliver it to the continental United States. The Soviet Union's only long-range bomber was the Tupolev Tu-4, a painstakingly reverse-engineered copy of the American B-29 Superfortress. While a capable aircraft, it was already obsolete and lacked the truly intercontinental range needed to pose a credible threat to the American heartland. A stopgap solution, the Tu-85, was developed, but it too fell short of the immense range required. In 1951, Stalin issued a stark directive to two of his top aircraft design bureaus, one led by Andrei Tupolev and the other by Vladimir Myasishchev. The order was simple in concept, but monumental in execution. Build a bomber with a range of over 7,000 miles or 11,000 kilometers, capable of carrying an 11-ton bomb load to targets across North America. Myasishchev's bureau went down the path that seemed most logical for a high-speed bomber pure jet propulsion, resulting in the sleek four-engine M4 Bison. It was fast, but the early jet engines were notoriously thirsty. The M4 chomped through fuel at an alarming rate and simply could not achieve the required range. It was a partial success, but not the weapon Stalin needed. Andrei Tupolev, a veteran aircraft designer who had survived the Stalinist purges, took a radically different and far more audacious approach. He knew that jet engines couldn't provide the necessary fuel efficiency for the marathon distances involved. Instead, he placed his faith in a new, unproven type of engine, the turboprop. This wasn't just any turboprop. His design would be built around the most powerful turboprop engine the world had ever seen, the Kuznetsov NK-12. This engine was a technological titan, a fusion of a jet turbine and a conventional propeller. The core of the engine used a turbine to generate immense power, but instead of creating thrust with hot gas, it drove a gearbox connected to two massive, four-bladed propellers. This choice was a colossal gamble. The engineering challenges were immense, but the potential payoff was a bomber that possessed the high subsonic speed approaching that of a pure jet, combined with the incredible fuel efficiency and long-range endurance of a propeller-driven aircraft. Tupolev paired these revolutionary engines with a sleek, modern airframe featuring wings swept back at a sharp 35-degree angle, a feature usually reserved for high-speed jet fighters. The resulting aircraft was a hybrid monster, a brute force solution to a complex problem. In 1952, the prototype designated the Tu-95 took to the skies. Despite an early tragic setback with a prototype crash due to a gearbox failure, the design proved its worth. By 1956, the Tupolev Tu-95 was officially entering service with the Soviet long-range aviation forces. The bear had been born. To understand the Tu-95 is to understand its heart, the Kuznetsov NK-12 engine. It remains, to this day, the most powerful turboprop engine ever put into mass production. Each of the four engines on a Tu-95 generates around 15,000 horsepower. 
This immense power is channeled into a set of eight propeller blades per engine, arranged in a contra-rotating configuration. This means each engine has two sets of four-bladed propellers, one mounted right behind the other, spinning in opposite directions. This design is incredibly complex but highly efficient. It cancels out the torque effect of a single large propeller and ensures a stable, uniform airflow over the wings. But this power comes with a very noticeable side effect. Noise. The sheer power required to push an aircraft of this size to speeds over 500 miles per hour, 800 kilometers per hour, means the propellers have to spin at an incredible rate. The tips of the outer propeller blades move so fast that they regularly break the speed of sound, creating a continuous series of miniature sonic booms. The result is a deep, deafening, and utterly distinctive roar that is the bear's acoustic signature. It is one of the loudest aircraft ever built. Anecdotes from the Cold War, while perhaps a bit exaggerated, claimed that submerged American submarines could detect the low-frequency drone of a 295 passing overhead on their passive sonar systems. Whether fact or folklore, it speaks to the aircraft's legendary acoustic footprint. The performance these engines unlocked was staggering for the era. The 295 boasted a top speed of 575 miles per hour, 925 kilometers per hour, making it the world's fastest propeller-driven aircraft, a title it still holds. More importantly, it had the legs to fulfill its mission. With a combat range of over 9,400 miles, 15,000 kilometers, it could take off from bases deep within the Soviet Union, fly over the North Pole, strike targets in the United States, and theoretically return home. Its service ceiling was over 45,000 feet, 13,700 meters, putting it high above much of the weather. For defense, it relied on speed, altitude, and a manned tail turret, typically equipped with two 23mm cannons. It was a last-ditch defense, but a clear signal that this bomber was expected to fly into hostile airspace and fight its way out. When the 295 entered service in 1956, the West took notice immediately. NATO assigned it the reporting name Bear, a fitting moniker for the large, powerful, and seemingly brutish machine. The initial version, the Tu-95 or Bear A, was a pure nuclear bomber. It was the physical manifestation of the Soviet Union's newfound ability to hold American cities at risk, fundamentally changing the strategic balance of the Cold War. From that point on, for decades, the sight of a bear on a radar screen or through a cockpit canopy became a routine part of the tense global standoff. But the genius of the 295 airframe was its adaptability. As the Cold War evolved, so did the bear. The base design was so robust and versatile that it became the foundation for a whole family of specialized aircraft. In the early 1960s, the 295RT, or Bear D, emerged. This version was a dedicated maritime reconnaissance and target designation platform. Its mission was to patrol the vast expanses of the Atlantic and Pacific, hunting for American and NATO naval fleets, particularly aircraft carrier battle groups. With its immense range, it could loiter for hours, shadowing naval forces and, in the event of war, relaying their precise location to Soviet submarines and missile-carrying bombers. The prominent chin-mounted radar bulge on the Bear D became one of its most recognizable features. Following this came the Tu-142, or Bear F, a significant redesign based on the Tu-95 airframe, but optimized for a different kind of hunt. The Bear F was a dedicated anti-submarine warfare aircraft. It was packed with sophisticated sensors, including a magnetic anomaly detector, or MAD boom, extending from its tail, sonoboys, and search radar. Its job was to find and destroy the West's most secretive and deadly assets, nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. The endurance of the Tu-142 made it perfect for long, tedious patrol missions over the ocean. Throughout the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, these various bear models became the Cold War's most frequent flyers. They constantly probed NATO airspace, flying down the coasts of Alaska, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States. This led to one of the most iconic rituals of the era, the cat and mouse game of interception. As soon as a bear was detected, NATO quick reaction alert fighters would scramble to meet it. American F-4 Phantoms, F-14 Tomcats, and later F-15 Eagles would fly wing-to-wing -wing with the giant Soviet bombers. 
Royal Air Force pilots in their English electric lightnings and tornadoes did the same over the North Sea. These encounters were typically professional, but always tense. Pilots would wave, take photographs of each other, and sometimes engage in gentle, non-aggressive maneuvering. But everyone involved knew that these were rehearsals for World War III. The bear was a constant, tangible reminder of the enemy, and for the fighter pilots sent to greet them, it was a rite of passage. By the 1970s, the idea of a bomber penetrating heavily defended enemy airspace to drop a freefall bomb was becoming suicidal. The advent of sophisticated surface-to-air missiles and advanced interceptor aircraft made the traditional bombing run obsolete. For many bomber designs of its vintage, this would have been the end of the road. But for the 295, it was the beginning of a new chapter. Soviet strategy shifted from penetration to standoff attack. The bomber no longer needed to fly over the target. It just needed to get close enough to launch a long-range cruise missile. This strategic shift gave the bear a new lease on life. In the late 1970s, Tupolev developed the 295 MS, known to NATO as the Bear H. While it looked like its predecessors, the Bear H was a largely new aircraft, borrowing heavily from the more advanced 242 anti-submarine airframe. Its mission was singular, to act as a flying launch pad for the Soviet Union's new generation of air-launched cruise missiles. Its primary weapon was the Raduga KH-55, a subsonic cruise missile with a range of over 1,500 miles, 2,500 kilometers, tipped with a 200 kiloton nuclear warhead. A Bear H could carry six of these missiles on a rotary launcher in its bomb bay. This transformation was revolutionary. The 295 MS could now fly to a launch point far outside the range of enemy defenses, unleash its payload of stealthy, terrain-hugging missiles, and turn for home. The age and speed of the airframe suddenly mattered far less than the sophistication of the weapons it carried. This adaptation was the key to the Bear's incredible longevity. It ensured that this 1950s design would remain a potent and feared strategic weapon system well into the 21st century. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the massive fleet of 295s was scattered among the newly independent states. While Russia retained the majority, significant numbers were left in Ukraine and Kazakhstan. Under arms reduction treaties and with American funding, most of the bombers outside of Russia were eventually dismantled, a symbolic end to their Cold War mission. For a time, it seemed the Bear's story might finally be drawing to a close. But the Russian Air Force continued to operate a core fleet of the 295 MS variants. Far from being retired, the Bear entered another phase of evolution. Russia initiated the 295 MSM modernization program, a deep upgrade designed to keep the bomber credible for decades more. This involved fitting the aging airframes with new advanced avionics, a new navigation system based on the Jlonas satellite network, and a modernized weapons control system. Crucially, the upgrade allowed the bomber to carry Russia's latest conventional and nuclear cruise missiles. These include the KH-101, a stealthy conventional cruise missile with a range estimated at over 2,700 miles, 4,500 kilometers, and its nuclear-tipped counterpart, the KH-102. For 60 years, the 295 was a weapon of deterrence, a threat that was never used in anger. That changed in 2015. As part of its military intervention in the Syrian civil war, Russia used 295 MS bombers to launch KH-555 and KH-101 conventional cruise missiles against targets in Syria. It was the Bears' combat debut, a stark demonstration that the old bomber was still a capable frontline weapon. In 2022, the 295 became a key instrument in the invasion of Ukraine, used extensively to launch waves of cruise missiles from the safety of Russian airspace against targets across the country. The Bear, once a symbol of a Cold War standoff, had become an active participant in a 21st century conflict. So why is this 70-year-old aircraft still flying? The answer is a testament to its brilliant, if unconventional, original design. The 295 is a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Its turboprop engines provide unparalleled fuel efficiency for the long-range, long-loiter missions of a standoff missile carrier, something that even modern jet engines struggle to match. The airframe itself is exceptionally robust and durable, 
a platform that can be endlessly upgraded with new electronics and new weapons. In its current role, speed is not the priority. Range, payload, and reliability are. The 295 delivers all three in a proven cost-effective package. It is the perfect truck to haul cruise missiles to their launch point. The Tupolev 295 Bear is more than just an aircraft. It is a flying monument to the Cold War, a testament to a unique branch of aviation engineering and a symbol of endurance. From its birth under Stalin's nuclear demand to its modern role as a cruise missile carrier, the Bear has prowled the skies for three generations. Its deafening roar has been the soundtrack to decades of geopolitical tension. Its silhouette a familiar sight to the NATO pilots tasked with watching its every move. It is an engineering masterpiece, a historical icon, and a potent weapon, all rolled into one. The immortal bear of Russia remains on guard, a rumbling, propeller-driven relic that still commands respect and inspires awe. We've journeyed through the seven-decade-long saga of this incredible machine, but history is filled with legends that refuse to fade away. What other piece of seemingly outdated military hardware do you think deserves its own deep dive for its sheer refusal to retire? Whether it's a tank, a ship, or another aircraft, drop your mission briefings for us in the comments below. We read every single one, and your idea might just become our next operation. If you enjoy uncovering the stories behind these titans of military history, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have your notifications on so you don't miss the next expedition into the annals of warfare. Thank you for watching.